Hey, sorry, guy. We we'll see how many people show up. So I don't know, maybe it's not so interesting to have a discussion. <laughs> it's like it. Uh, yeah, we'll see. All right, there's still, there's still three minutes left, and we have three people at least. And Guy oh, was okay. saying he was coming at least. And... So now we are team oh. also. Wow. Yep. Uh, man, the, the last, I think, RNA session I was, I think there were 10. Oh, no, it was 20 at the end, but 10 started. Yeah, Randall's coming. Keep coming. Yeah. We, we, we get a few more minutes before we start. So welcome. I, I have no idea how many people show up because this is very informal, I guess. But now, it, now at least my clock is actually whatever five o'clock. So, so uh, I can at least uh, welcome all of you. I see John is showing up also. Uh, there are more people coming here, so let's give it a few more minutes. Uh, so yeah, man, this was actually David Jones' idea to try to have a discussion session, but he I know he's busy on these times. So I think he's teaching and all that, so he can't make it these times. So but so he's not here. But um I was I thought it was a good idea to at least have some feedback on uh, man, what, if we think this is a good idea to continue this and if it's a good idea to if we should change something. And also maybe this is a chance to give some feedback to John and um, Christoph and uh, Alex, uh, Andre to to for Casp. I guess it's maybe a bit late for that, but it's but anyway, you might yeah. listen into what we're doing, what people have if they have some ideas. So, uh, so uh, I mean, as most people, I mean, I mean, my personal reflections here is like we started this of the Casp. 15. And uh, I think the participation was really good in the beginning and it slowly dropped off. So now we are 22 right now. I think the first ones were 100. So we are, 
it's uh, so you might have and I've seen similar trends in the and at least in the RNA session there was like in the beginning it was also many and now last time it was like twenties also. So uh, that's the question. I mean, it's not that much work to organize it, but it's uh, certainly there's no reason to do it if people are not interested. Uh, so I will, uh, and uh, we also had in the beginning we had more of a session that we had uh, discussions, uh, open air questions, two presentations, and now it's much more like a regular seminars. And of course, there are many other seminar series going around in the world. I mean, there are. Uh, I know that the the Elixir 3D Bioinfo communities in Europe has it once a month. They are uh, this is this Boston Protein Design Group. They are probably 3D Sig. I think also has something like that. So there are several like this going on. So they are, and it's some clearly overlap. And also between the three cast uh, 3D SIGs, there are some overlap also, but the, but the RNA, I guess, is quite much focused on RNA, but we had an RNA presentation here also. And the ensemble, we had like also, we had, we had one more of variability here, and also that's been an ensemble as well. So I think it would be quite hard to coordinate it completely because it's actually involving too many people. It just makes it just more difficult. It's easier if you, I mean, if you have, if you really to coordinate all three, it would be. A bit of a bottleneck, I think. Uh, so I, I'm not in big favor of that. But I, anyway, I'm, I made some a poll that we can do later that you can give you feedbacks. But uh, otherwise, I asked my plan was just that we should actually start I mean, discussing if someone has any opinions about what you, we think we should do with this in the future, if we should change it, or I mean, the seminar series, we should do it more frequent, less frequent, change whatever, continue to this or change it or anything. So the, the word is free. So if someone has any opinion, just start talking or raise your hand or whatever. I can. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll ask people. So Sergey, what do you think as a co-organizer? Should we continue? Or is it... Well, I think, well, there are two Sergeys, but only one is present. <laughs> I think we shall continue. We are not. We are not meeting too often. Once a month is just right. RNA sessions are happening too often for me. I cannot be ready every second week. And one hour discussion is also just right. We shouldn't make it longer. I think it's totally fine for you if you if you can continue organizing it. Yeah, I mean, I I agree. I mean. The spring is almost already full. There's like one, I think one, one spot left. So, I mean, it's always a bit hard to find speakers and things like that. And I, but it's, but it's people I invited could not come in the fall because dates didn't work, but they are booked for the spring. Except it's a, I have a list on it. I share my screen actually. I Hi. had a good, I had a good discussion, just a small comment, with uh, the Elixir Ligand organizer or representative. Uh, so we shall have uh, a combined session on protein ligand interactions uh, in the coming year. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. I mean, so this is the, the seminars uh, arranged for the spring. Uh, so April 10 is still free, but uh, and uh, Frank hasn't given us any titles, but we have uh, the rest are are full. So that's uh, I think they are all interesting. Arnie, uh, can I make a comment? Yes. Yeah. So um, I find it very valuable. I'm I'm not able to attend every time. I try to get at least some people from my group, and a lot of times we're even reviewing the videos, you know, separately uh, in our lab meetings offline. So I find it really a very valuable activity. And, and you bring up the idea that I, I actually didn't realize that the Boston Protein Design Group was online. I thought that was an in-person meeting. So that's that's interesting. But I, I think one question for me is um, what's what distinguishes this this uh, uh, SIG from other kind of just straightforward seminars? And maybe we should chat about that a little bit. Like, what do we hope to gain from having a CASP SIG? Uh, I mean, part of it is to advertise the activity of CASP and like in the ensemble part to bring in um, uh, uh, new targets by making people aware and even 
helping develop what, what is a target for that activity. So maybe um, we should talk about that. To what degree is this a CASP SIG? And I'm talking about the, the AI SIG that you organize. What degree is it a CASP special interest group? Does it relate to the activity of CASP? And what degree is it uh, just another web-based seminar series? Maybe you can comment on that, or how can we evolve? Uh, yes, I, I I agree with you, and I think we started out more cast specific, specific, and we sort of turned into more of a general protein structure, or macromolecular structure, AI type of seminars. And I think it was partly because it was very hard to get good discussions going. And we had this meeting, or we had this um, PyTorch uh, presentation, and we had this uh, open poll presentation, and so on. That was maybe a bit more like how to, if, if you could collaborate somehow, and so on. Uh, I, I personally found it very interesting, but I didn't do anything about it, and I don't think many others did either. So I, I, I agree that it would be very good to have more of a discussion. I mean, in the ensemble, you do have it more than we have it, I think. But I'm not really sure how to make it like that. Yeah. I think there are some things you could do to sort of structure the discussion. I mean, one thing would be for each session to ask somebody to lead the discussion, to have a set of questions they want to probe. Um, I think you could also have a general structure for these are the sort of issues we'd like to get at in this SIG. Um, I think every one we have, there are a lot of, to me, interesting ideas sort of buried in the paper, and we kind of skate over those. But for example, we could specifically discuss, well, what were the ideas in this paper, and how do they relate to the ideas that other people are using? Um, you know, I'm sure there are different ways of doing this, but the basic suggestion is think of ways to structure the discussion to get it driven more. Yeah. I mean, somehow that would require someone hosting each session a bit more. And uh, yep. so far, to be honest, my success of getting other people to host the sessions has been quite uh, uh, fruitless. I mean, I got uh, my LOD helped a lot and the SK has helped and so has helped, but it's not uh, that easy to get people to suggest names or come up with things. That's that, but I, I was very happy to do it, but it, it's, I, I'm not going to spend my time hunting people to do it because that's actually sure. more work than do it yourself. But that's, I agree. So my, the structure is, but, but, but even structure discussion, it needs, how do we make it cast related? Because like that's, that's that might be that everything has to be cast related, right? I mean, I think cast sort of lurking in the background and, and influencing the way things go a bit, but what we'd like out of CASP anyway is that it somehow encourages the right sort of progress in the field. And so I see this series as contributing to that. It's not, you know, yeah. it's not doesn't be, well, what's this got to do with CASP every minute? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I think so. I, mean, I think we, I think we had very good speakers. Um, and I think there's been some discussion a bit valuable. And of course, most of the speakers are people that have a paper or pre-print out some as well. So that's how somehow we are. Have we picked most of them? So that's something at least I want, I mean, some of us wants to learn more about. Mm -hmm. And of course, you learn more about discussing the paper with the author than just reading it. Well, just some ideas. I mean, in the ensemble cast, we ran into the issue that I was having two speakers per hour, which was just too much. Yeah. I mean, they were great. But now by cutting down to one, then I asked the people to stay to a half hour or so and I usually, I give a little introduction, even though it's a little redundant each time, so that people who are new to it get an idea of what we're doing and why we're doing it. But then there's usually about 20 minutes for, for some discussion. And, uh, and I don't know that it's quite as successful as it needs to be. But uh, I mean, one idea following on what John said is, um, I don't know if this works, but I'll put it out as an idea. Could we have senior people in our research groups uh, have the task to lead that discussion or have the bullet points? I mean, if you identify someone in your research group or one of the other organizers' research groups who would talk with uh, their PI about what the basic things they should be focusing on, 
but then let them be sure to uh, press the questions or have a list of questions and involve them in it. I, I just put that out as a thought. Well, well, the most senior person in my research group has been here for one year and this is a junior PhD student. So I, I would have a hard to find someone like that. I don't have anyone, but well, maybe someone maybe else does. Across the organizers, there could be people who could yeah. do that. I think we are quite, most of us has mainly PhD students. I don't think, I don't know. Uh, or, um, yeah. So we, we don't, maybe, I'm so sure. Someone might have it. I, I don't know. Or every member in every group. But uh, then it's certainly, I, mean, I, I think, I mean, you certainly can find someone, but it's, uh, uh, I don't have anyone else that can could do that. But I mean, maybe someone else has. I mean, I, I would love volunteers, and uh, but it's, not that easy to get people to volunteer. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it fits into this discussion, but I'm just wondering if the CASP folks can tell us a little bit about the future of CASP. I guess, Arnie, you want to get to that or you want to go into Yeah, well, no, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I guess let's. Uh... I had a small poll to do at the end, but I guess we can, yeah, we can switch to that fine. I, I, if no one else has anything else to add about the seminars. I mean, if someone has something that they want to change, I think that now is the time to raise your uh, hand. I mean, we could try to go more, more aspirated, but uh, at the end, we, we are down to like the people that, that we can convince to give a talk and has, has something that we find interesting. And obviously, we are super happy if someone suggests something. I mean, even yourself, you can suggest yourself to give a talk. But it's, um, I think I agree with Sergey, it's like one hour, once a month. That's realistic i don't think we want to have more because it's people will just drop off and so, uh, <clears throat> i i have maybe a bit out of on a limb idea but we have been thinking about this in cast for many years now and uh probably didn't have the critical mass but th this is uh, a very valuable community in this field and and perhaps we could produce a, a, maybe an evolving resource of, of uh, well, maybe documentation on state of the art. What for for a general user? So kind of making the structure prediction methods even more accessible to general user than they are now, or maybe they are not all that much accessible at the moment. So making them more accessible to the general user by developing uh, a state of the art, revolving, evolving guidebook to to how to use the new methods, uh, and um, not necessarily you know as part of the seminar, but maybe just tapping the resource that we have here in this group and and other cities. Yeah, I I, I think it's. Uh... Do things. I mean, for me, the natural place would that would be this three. It's in Europe would be three. The three D buying for LXC group that sort of has a task developing teaching material thing, and I think they might even do that. But I agree, it's something. But I, I, it's it would be, yeah. I mean, I see the problem is to convince people to do it. I mean, you would like to give people a, a seminar how to use something, and I mean. Sergey Shinikov gives fantastic seminars on, on how to use alpha in different ways. They are luckily available on YouTube for their research, but and some of them are organized and they are, and I'm sure other people do it also, but it's not organized, I agree, and maybe it should be, but it probably could be just a collection of existing YouTube videos to a large extent. But who wants to collect that? Maybe Sergey <laughs> can put it together. I think he likes doing stuff like that. Maybe you can, yeah. yeah. But I agree. I think another problem is that very few actually know how any of these new methods work. At least that is my impression when speaking to people. Like, yeah, maybe you can use it now, but you haven't developed it, right? So I think it, it can be an idea to kind of do a detailed version of AlphaFold or something like that. Yeah, well, I agree. You, you mean, you mean I, 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 I guess, um, yeah, Bim, go ahead. I mean, you probably think you know how it works, but trust me, you don't. Most no. likely not, if you didn't rewrite it and retrain yeah. it. Of course not. And, uh, and I see that talking to a lot of people now, that there are a lot of confusions about what's going on in the network. 
Liam? Well, I think there's a lot of confusion yeah. about what to use. You know, there's a lot of new methods appearing and people want to yeah. run them, but they don't know whether they should run them or, or anything like that. So some kind of system in which the community provides guidance or background or something would be great. I, but I think I agree with what you're saying, Arnie. It's not easy to get people to do that. And so the question would be, how could it be put together in a way that would work? Yeah. So I think in response to that, I mean, one of the key issues is we, we don't know whether they work because we don't have enough data, right? Essentially, like on, on multiple confirmations and which confirmations the protein might adopt mm -hmm. and all these things as we've discussed before. Um, so my question there is that because Alex here provides a lot of these things, like, you know, it's the data infrastructure. It's also um, training in principle, like, you know, the, a lot of connections to um, to the community as well. So, I mean, how do you see that evolve? Because, I mean, the, there's sort of, to me, at least a logical uh, relationship between CASP and Alex here, um, especially given the structural work that they do in the training. So, I mean, what what is your vision of that from a cast perspective because i think there's you know it makes sense i think to combine efforts as much as possible um i guess we haven't really thought about it uh, at least i haven't i think it's a very good idea um i'll talk to tim hubbard who is the the incoming director about about that okay yeah, I mean, I don't want to, because I, I don't know, you know, I don't know much about the historical context either. But um, yeah, I mean, Alexir is moving more and more towards also integrating, for example, IDP and the 3D by info and then proteomics data, which is also going to be very relevant in, for in vivo confirmations in the long term. Uh, so in terms of data provision, there's a lot of, you know, interesting data to be got from there, I think, in the future. Um, and then, you know, if, if there's a, a system that allows certain data to be withheld for prediction, then that makes even more sense, I think. Yeah. And maybe you have Camille. Yes, but, you know, it's going to be more complex than probably than, um, well, I don't know. I mean, if you want to, if you want to link to the data, then, you know, th this is the thing that we have also discussed in the other. Yeah. A SIG, then it's going to become more complex than that in terms of yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's many. Yeah, but, but can we, can we, um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's also a Capri community that is sort of uh, having a bit of restart, and it's uh, so sort of, but that, that's sort of, uh, I mean, I'm sure that the CASP <laughs> leadership are discussing at least with, or think about it, and uh, I, I agree. It's, for me, the good thing about Casper that it's sort of kind of open and it's easy to newcomer and it's I like the timing that's once every two years we have some time to reflect. And uh, I sure it could could change, but that's yeah. I I, I, I agree, but I, and my elixir, my for people who don't know, it's elixir is a European sort of infrastructure for bioinformatics or for like life science thing, and it's a lot of different groups and one of them is 3D Bioinfo that is held by Christina Rengo, uh, which is inter I mean, sort of a goal is to integrate 3D bioinformatics tools basically and, and different things. But it's very little money and uh, not uh, for running small projects. And the other one is uh, intrinsic disorder. I guess I guess Beam, you're ahead of that now, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm cool you do that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true that there's little money, but the money that there is does does move things forward. I yeah. guess. Casp, you yeah. also don't get paid, right? Yeah. As far as I so I mean in, in that respect, it's more people that yeah. really wanna um, yeah. move the infrastructure forward. Um yeah. Then I didn't know about Tim Hubbard, but Tim Hubbard, perhaps no not everyone knows, was one of Casp organizers in in yeah. the nineties and early two thousands. Yeah, 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 I heard that he was going to be out of it, but I haven't seen him yet. So yeah. I mean, certainly it's something, but it's um, basically a, not a single person fully paid by this. It's like it's a, this, this is some very little money spread out to a few groups. <laughs> so, so uh, but it's, it's certainly something that should collaborate. I mean, so we had sort of collaboration in this in the last meeting in Prague, I guess, because it was like yeah. the three G Sig. Well, maybe it was like, oh, well. 
Well, in, in a way, I think because one, one thing that I do not like about Alex or even mm -hmm. Koli myself is that it's it's a little bit maybe elitarian in terms of the people that are can be involved because of these implementation studies and everything. So I, I think it's really important that also in terms of infrastructure, the community stays connected and also like novel developments from groups that don't have all the, the money for like large scale infrastructure and, you know, paying software engineers and all these things that they can also still be involved. So I think there's a natural connection there because the Felix here provides the large scale infrastructure for the data. And then with CASP, there's a more wider coverage of the community and new ideas, then that's, that would be a, you know, a win-win as they say. I don't know, it's just a, yeah. So the, the focus of this meeting is the AI SIG, but I, I wanna just say, if I can, a few words about the ensemble SIG and get a little bit of input yeah. from Good. some experts here. So I think that, that that's going pretty well. We started off with, uh, uh, we were getting more than 100 people joining. And, and these days it's about 50, which I, I think is okay. I think it's um, got a lot of attention and interest in the community. I, uh, uh, I get like, when I put a link out on LinkedIn about the announcement, I get like 10,000 people who look at that. So I think it's good for CASP. In the, in the, uh, the, in the spring, so we've decided to do an experiment on ensembles in uh, in CASP 16, kind of following what we did in CASP 15. And the real challenge is how we get targets or uh, ground truth data. And uh, we've had a lot of discussions about what that means and what the kind of targets are. So in the spring, I really want to um, try to engage even CASP predictors in the meetings to try to define, help define what those experiments will look like, what kind of data we would have or how we would do assessments. So it's really kind of evolving from kind of teaching people about stuff to really trying to help design the CASP experiment. Um, so, that, so that's actually the plan of that. And I, I, we have a working committee uh, and I, I, I probably have a meeting with them early in January to assess. Our, our meeting in January is gonna be about representing multiple confirmations and how they might be represented in the PDB. And there's some work from my group and also from Jim James Fraser's group about uh, like SIF formats for representing multiple confirmations. Um, so that, that's kind of my report to this group. And maybe I can get some feedback from this group about, is this useful? Is this a good direction? Is uh, Are there other ideas about how we might do that one a little differently? I don't mean to misdirect this from the AI SIG, but I wanted to use this opportunity to get a little bit of feedback. May I ask you, I mean, is the idea that basically if people should submit an assignment, they submit 100 models representing the ensemble, and then you calculate whatever is needed from that. Is that the idea? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the idea is to back calculate data. So we have one one experiment we clearly will have is where you have a linker between do domains, and we generate data on the uh, 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 RDCs or, uh, or 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 fret type data on the on the variability of the domains with respect to one another and then we would back calculate from the models to fit to the data so, that's so have, the have you of... had any ideas how many models you need to represent the time I mean, if you have sax data it might is it five or five thousand or million i have no idea so Ar arnie i have to say this whole experiment with multiple confirmations is so far out there it may be totally a flop in the end uh there's a lot of challenges and i think if i wasn't at the later stage in my career i wouldn't even take it on because it's sort of risky but um i, I think um yeah i think we'll just have to see we'll just have to see and one problem is people may provide us sets of models that we just can't manage we just can't handle so uh it could be even embarrassing at some level but uh, I don't know the answer to that question. My, my suggestion is that you actually do not submit sets of models that represent ensemble, but you submit, submit like um, clusters. So you have like X number of clusters and you have weights to them. That would limit the data a lot. So I can say, assuming you have 1% of data in one confirmation, 99% of the other guys, you need only two models instead of submitting 100 models. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think you, you you probably should have a smaller set, but you need to assign weights. 
Yeah. So these are the kind of discussions I hope we'll have in the spring in the SIG uh, uh, ensemble uh, project. And, and there are also questions about are we looking at, you know, ensemble weighted, you know, a Boltzmann weighted uh, 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 assessment. We really have to if we're going to compare with data. So, um, yeah, I don't mean to 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 divert this discussion too much to that, but um, I do appreciate that suggestion, Arnie, and I do appreciate that you've been involved in that SIG and have made a lot of helpful uh, discussion, contribute a lot to the discussion. Thank you. Um, may I, well, I guess we can soon go back to Ilya's question about uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Eski has a comment. Yes, before that, hi everyone. I have a, a, a suggestion. So this uh, the line of speakers until June is just great. And while checking this, um, I, I started to think like maybe for the other half, if we decide to continue after June, maybe we could have blocks of topics, like for example, uh, antibody antigen interactions. So then for three months or four months, if you will be able to find uh, four speakers talking on the same topic for four consecutive months, let's say, we will be done like, more in the like of class setting, more like a, a university setting, uh, we will be more like focusing on this type of um, um, problem and which type of methods are out there. Then we will be able to discuss within, I don't know, th three or four months of time. Um, so I, uh, for the first time uh, as a participating group, I am participating Capfried in this round and they have, uh, um, quite a number of antibody antigen targets. And this was never my, uh, uh, this was never my uh, polling within the expertise uh, uh, area of my research, let's say. Uh, so that then I realized like, I mean, we see so many papers that are coming out and this is the concern for all of us, but I, I, I really don't know like which tool to use because I have no idea uh, how which one works and the competition deadline is very short. Uh, as you know, um, or very uh, tight. So then that made me think like if there would have been an opportunity maybe to really focus and discuss, it doesn't need to be antibody, could be also um, a complex uh, modeling or could be design. So we uh, switch from one subject to the other one and not all of them are using the same algorithm, obviously. So instead of maybe uh, going um, towards an algorithm focus direction, which we tried to do at, at the beginning, maybe we can switch to more like problem-based focus. So that would be my suggestion. If, for example, you, that this would have been available in my current setting, I would have really benefited from this. Like if we would have a block of antibody talks, for example, or block of uh, uh, peptide interaction talks. Thanks. Uh, uh, I, mean, I, I think it could be good. I think I see some problems. One is like you see, like Cecilia, I tried to get her to talk in uh, uh, during the fall, and of course she never was. But it's not a date that worked until June. It's like to getting three antibody talks to the right people at exactly the same time, the same date, in like in the follow up is is practically going to be hard. I mean, we could of course change. We don't have the same date. We have switching dates. So we I, I, and I, and the other thing, even three months is a long time. So I think if you want to have that, we probably should organize it as a mini symposium one one. Or three. maybe that. Yeah, I think yes. I mean, if, if you want yes, that, I mean, yes. and of course anybody would be welcome to organize that in and say we do a mini symposium three mm -hmm, hours. Mm -hmm. Time soon is mm -hmm, going to be hard, mm -hmm. but if you record it, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But, I well, give the, you, record, but the recordings are definitely great. I yeah. for all the mm -hmm. six, I always sometimes some of the talks I use, watch them multiple times. I think it's just an excellent mm -hmm. initiative. Yeah. And that should continue. But mm -hmm. a mini symposium, that's an that's a great idea, actually. I think you could, I mean it's actually I mean it's not super hard to get people convinced, but uh, if you have a fixed date and a fixed time and, and scheduling and asking people, it, it's it, there is some work yes, to get yes. it to work out. And yes, yes. And uh, it's a bit of randomness to the whole thing. And then uh, and you don't say oh I, you don't want to say to someone, oh that worked you, and we won't don't want to talk at all because you can't, and like that's so it's uh, mm -hmm. it is little bit of work, I think it's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and, no, and but, of course it's a bit, a bit random, yeah. Bim? But, but this, this this version is much better if we have two, three people talking and they'll be, we'll also have the opportunity to really compare their methods in one single session. And uh, I think that yeah. will be very constructive. Yeah. 
Uh, my, my only concern is that there are a lot of things on that on the web already. So like it's competition is a bit hard, but it maybe people come. Yeah, Bim? Yeah, sorry. Just from a, it's already been mentioned, really. But would it make sense from from the prediction perspective to also have like one session where you just have several people that have good prediction methods, just have them talk for five minutes about how they would ideally experimentally validate what comes out of their predictions. I think just to make it more concrete, because I think that's something that's missing really often. I mean, maybe not with protein design, but with multiple confirmations, definitely. Just to see what their perspective, because I think that would be very interesting. Um, you know, maybe not necessarily the, the right experimental method, but sort of like what, how would you know whether what comes out is relevant or not? I mean, for structure prediction, I don't think it's a big, big problem, because I think we sort of have 25 years experience of it. And well, if you, if you have distinct like a, a limited amount of distinct confirmations, then yes, but as soon as yeah, I mean, if you have, have a cryo EM or, or crystal structure, then we are pretty good at it. Yeah. yeah, okay, but if you go beyond that, if you have yeah, yeah. confirmations of loops yeah. or like, you know. I mean, there is, for instance, this super interesting Kaggle competition for uh, RNA secondary structure or like RNA protection. That is, uh, I mean, they have like, I don't know, 600 groups or something like that. So it's super big. They have much more than CASP ever had. And then the down the data, I don't know, there are millions of examples. So that's that's uh, uh, for RNA. That I mean, that's I mean, it's not structure either, but it was some structure information in there. So the, 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 there is, I guess, if you set up the right big data set, there is, I guess, we, and and you have something the competitive people are interested. So that's that's. Uh, mm. But yeah, I think I think it could be interesting. I, mm, not sure that the AI SIG is the right place to have it. I think the most things about the experimental but, SIGs. I mean, but can you can you really separate one from the other? I I wonder. I, I, I try to be more and more. I mean, just because that is, I mean, we started first and then we were more general. And I thought about the idea was to I try to keep it things that are AI related. So, that, so we are not just, it's not modeling. Okay, but AI related, you need to validate your methods as well. Sure, right? sure. It's part of the, but it's, but it's of the AI. description so of methods for machine one, learning. One of the more important parts, yeah. I would say even. I don't know. It's just, um, yeah, just an idea. Just that, you know, it, it maybe doesn't make sense to have um, things to parallel sometimes in, in terms of, uh, you know, this is the method development and this is the, where we can validate it, which is I mean, more, you certainly have this for the for the ligands. I mean, we all all know the uh, Charlotte Dean's work on uh, on the, the um, uh, buffering down to the AI methods for pretty ligands to basically put them in the cloud, and or not in the cloud, but like no no, they put them in the right place, but clearly not looking correct. So if you have to use RMSD, it's a good they, they look bad. But if you use anything else, it's good. So that, that but that's. That's and I guess that's almost another thing, yeah. Should we go on? I mean, to uh, I mean, Ilya's question about to I guess John and Christoph and Andre. Anything else that we need to learn about CASP for the future or next CASP? Well, we I, we can say a bit about, about what we're planning, right, and then people can react and, and make suggestions. Uh, so there's the usual time scale. That's to say. Uh, the prediction season will start mid-April and run sort of through July with the meeting we plan in December. We've not done anything about the specifics there. In terms of what we're planning to cover, it's broadly the same as last time. That's to say protein structure, protein complexes, and actually we're going to merge those two into one. Um, RNA structure and RNA complexes, and somehow if we get any targets, protein RNA complexes, ligand protein interactions with a heavy emphasis on relevance to drug development. Uh, ensembles, we've already heard a little about that from Guy, who's sort of taken on that, um, and um, estimates of accuracy how good are they we think again we've always thought this that's a very important area 
And we are talking about ways of including integrative modeling. That's to say, in some sense, having what we used to call data assisted, where there may be data available for difficult targets from cross-linking or FRET or a number of other techniques, SACs and so on, and first releasing targets without that information and then adding that information. That's very unformed at this point, and we really want input on that. Um, in terms of assessment, we, except for accuracy estimation, we've sort of got people in place. Not everything's completely nailed down, but I think we've got very good assessors. I already mentioned Guy, uh, Mike Gilson, who used to do 3DR, or one of the organizers of 3DR, has agreed to do the ligand protein stuff. Uh, Nick Grishin and his colleagues will probably do the protein um, end of things. Um, Eric Westhoff and maybe Riju, he's still thinking about it, will do the RNA again. Uh, so the one gap we've got, assuming everything goes ahead as it's being talked about at the moment, is the um, accuracy estimation area. Uh, one thing that's been discussed is a, a perennial problem with CASP has been we don't get enough information about the methods that we used. And SG has wrote to this group already that this was particularly an issue, I think, in the last CASP or the last several CASPs where there are all of these methods and we don't really know not only what the methods are, but how they were actually used. What was the MSA and so on? And so one thing that SG and I have had a couple of emails about, and SG has a lot of ideas, is how we should um, try and get information, at least for the best groups on that, that would be useful. And we've also discussed within CASP uh, trying to add a sort of, it's not methods assessment, it's a methods analysis in some way. Uh, we talked to David Jones about this, and the idea is that we would have probably one person for each of the CASP categories who would look at, try and get as much information as possible, trying to analyze the information about methods. And you know, we assume it's all gonna be dominated by AI and so would be AI methods. And at the end, there would be some kind of review paper from these people on, on what they could make out about methods. That's sort of the outline. There's a lot of stuff I know. So um, I don't know, Andre and Christoph, do you wanna add anything at this point? No, I think you covered. Yeah, so maybe one, one more thing, you know, that we also want to do what we started doing in the previous CASPs, and, and that's evaluation versus the experimental data, not only versus the, the models, and that's definitely would be needed for ensembles, right? So we've been doing this for cryoEM, uh, and uh, we already spoke to some of the future assessors about how they see it, you know, but but in 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 our environment that we have now, so that looks like it's very important for some at least categories now. Do you, I mean, have, I, a, I, I, do you have a do you have a vision for CASP seventeen and beyond? Um, no, um, and I think you know one of the value of this sort of discussion is that people can give us those kind of guidance. I think that, you know, typically CASP runs CASP to CASP. Um, we've had a run of good luck lately, I would say, with the emergence of the AI methods and the last four CASPs, I think, have been great. But we've had CASPs in the, in the past, which have really not had much excitement, because not much was happening. And so you know, how we plan, how we proceed, I think, depends on how the field evolves more than anything else. But listening. Uh, I, I have some comments. I mean, I, I like the, all, all the ideas. I mean, one thing was like, it's like, of course, accuracy is important. And I mean, someone says we should have PLT per atom instead of per residue. And maybe that's already possible. I don't know. And also, Damon says the problem, I think, is like one of the reasons somehow why. Has to be successful is that it's very free. I mean, the ADP community has that you have to submit your method, you have to run on their server, you have to get it working there. And here we had anything from um, uh, people's mind working things. And I'm sure that people don't use the same method for every target because they try different things. 
and people use not a single MSA, they probably use different types of MSA thumbs and for part here and there. And somehow that's actually, I mean, it's maybe bad for, we know that our methods that have worked very well in CASP, but then they make a web server that does not work as well. The, the, and people are being fooled by that, but it's, because it's not the same. Maybe just CPU time, or maybe something else different. But uh, it's uh, but on the other hand, if you don't let people be free, we will not evaluate state of art. It's possible that next alpha fold will not be free, not available, and not they won't even might not even tell you what we do. But maybe it's a way ahead of all other methods are methods, and we want to know that. So that's uh, may even, of course, we will be sad that they don't let it, us play with it. But that's so. I think it's like it, it, there is a risk of demanding too much. And I mean, how can we guarantee that the MSA that people submit is the same as they as they use? I mean, we should, before we should submit templates, and I use templates, but I had never when it was a complicated pipeline. So I never really remember which one was. So I submitted no template every time because it was the only way to get the pipeline work automatically. And I'm sure I was not the only one. So, so it, it's it's not a trivial thing, and without breaking, without basically getting the software and run it yourself, and we can't do that. No, I agree with all of that. Um, I think first of all, we would not be assessing methods um, because um, we're relying on people to give us information, and so you know, I think the information can be useful, but we can't regard it as having the same rigor as the actual prediction results. I think you know the prediction results to me are, are fairly clean they don't depend on trusting anybody um and so that's why they are reasonably useful once you get into this murky area of what do you do it's not nearly as clear and so i think that anything we do to try and understand methods get methods information has to be very distinct from the actual assessment process of how methods perform mm. Um, I don't think, I mean, this is, again, exchanges with SG, that we would want to um, try and collect all methods from all people. The idea would be that once the initial evaluation of performance is done, uh, we would see who the five or ten best performing groups are. And then we would say to them, you know, we, we want from you at this stage these this sort of information we would try to make it you know not too onerous but we do want to know and we would let people know in advance we'd be asking this we do want to know what you did about msas what sampling protocols you used and as you say Arnie, people use different things and so on it's never going to be clean it's going to be messy but i guess my feeling is that it could be a lot better than what we have now that we we should move more in the direction of getting more clarity on methods and I think as a practical matter, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure you have the same experience, actually. People come up to me and say, oh, I ran AlphaFold 2 and it didn't work. And I say, well, you should try more sampling. And they say, mm. well, what's the best way of doing that? And I don't really have an answer because we don't have any kind of insight from the last CASP about how different sampling methods performed on different sorts of targets. I think I'm sort of echoing yeah. your line. I'm taking some of your thunder here. You want to say something? Um, I'm sorry. I also wanted to add something. Yeah, so, yeah, um, um, so one uh, big hurdle that we went through while preparing the multimer assessment paper, and we wrote the paper uh, twice, so Andre knows. Uh, the main problem was that there was a, a huge jump in the, the accuracy of the uh, predicted models. But we didn't have enough information to understand how that happened. So we only had an access to the abstracts. So for example, the top ranking group, um, they modified the MSAs, but they did not touch the sampling protocol. But we did not have an access to their NF values, for example. So I really wanted to make a plot of their like per case given success versus the NF they acquired from their protocol. But this was not available. So we really tried hard, and Andre also tried hard. We worked together for a long time, for months, to be able to come up with a recipe for the community to say, like, if you do this and this, then you're going to obtain this. For this type of target, you should use this and this. But with having only five models and an abstract, this was, like, very much, uh, very, very little data to be able to construct such a, um, uh, such a recipe. And in the... Um, Age of AI, 
benchmarking things like performing objective benchmarking is as important as ever. And CASP is, uh, I think is even like has been and, and uh, doing like has been like the uh, central benchmarking uh, uh, initiative for the community. But now I think CASP has even more uh, responsibility in this uh, because also the, like related to what we just discussed, we don't know what works how on a blind data set. So that's why I proposed it's not realistic to collect everything, obviously, but at least from the top ranking groups, so just to understand so that the assessor could know what the group did to be able to obtain, for example, a good model for a non-body target, for a non-body interaction, or for an antibody interaction. So for interesting cases, for general cases, okay, more like, uh, um, more like easy to predict cases, okay, but for interesting cases, it would have been really great if we would have access to this data. And based on this experience, I propose this. Uh, my comment, I, I think these questions can only be answered by proper benchmarking. You cannot do it on five non of cast. You need 500. Yes, 5, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. But how are you going to create the benchmark? At least it's just like CASP already creates the avenue of providing structures, hopefully. A good amount of them would not be seen by the model that is uh, being used by the participants, which is not necessary, which might not be necessarily the case, of course. Um, but at least it's like the it's a great opportunity because it's already being organized. But of course, like other benchmarking uh, initiatives, like from academia or from could be also from industry, these are as important as well. But CASP is anyhow being organized. So why why not to deduce this information from from a cusp round as well. So, because it's already um, there, um, so it's given. My point is that we probably would need 10 times the number of targets, at least. At least yeah, 10 times sure, the uh, I mean, probably 100 times the different targets to get it. I mean, it's so small numbers. Sure, sure. It's not uh, like an all round benchmarking, this I understand, but at least the data is there. People are producing it. Yeah, so, yeah. why only stick to five models if we want to really understand what the uh, Top performing group did to be able to produce this good model. Uh, so uh, that's that's uh, my uh, point. I don't understand why would it help if you have more models. Many groups would submit five, fifty models that look the same. No, no, they can. I I don't mean this. So everyone can continue submit to five. Sub, can continue to submit five models, but then when it is time to to assess what the top performing groups did, did. So for example, the very top one. For example, Volner. He described everything in his paper, but this was not a necessity. So he he did so because the way he ran the protocol was based on an idea that you do things systematically. The plots that he provided in his paper, in his CAS paper, for example, accuracy versus alpha fold score, this is what I wanted to have when I was assessing his models, but I didn't have an access to it. So that's what I mean. Okay. Of course, he can also explain this in his paper, but why not the assessor wouldn't have an access to this data as well? So this is my point. Yeah, I mean, I, I, assuming that people did that type of sampling, but if someone had manual intuition and looked at one model for the yes, science, but, another one. Oh, but that's also fine. This means that human are human uh, intuition is still valuable and that can be included as well. I mean, yeah. that's I don't think that that's a problem, but at least it would be, I mean, the like uh, some like the assessor who is, who that person is gonna be would be able to understand what is happening for which region and uh, for which reason at least that that's what I hope for and this would also uh, be um, a nice initiative to provide reproducible results you know and this is related but I guess everybody is going through this what John said like like what should I do to be able to get a good model for this type of complex. Okay, one could say do more sampling, but okay, are we really sure? Maybe with a better MSA, we will be able to save the targets already with a little amount of sampling. So, um, and I think to be able to comment on this, it would be great if uh, CASP also would start looking into this. I think I agree with Arne here. I think you can easily draw wrong conclusions if you don't have enough targets. And I think this happened during last CASP. Lots of people told me that uh, co-evolution in the 
paired NSAs was not that important because they found good templates and so on, which had a similar interface. And I mean, if you then throw away that and you want to run complexes, you'll get really bad results. Yeah, sure. But everybody knows that you wouldn't, you cannot get uh, a so, sort of a solid hypothesis only by analyzing three models or three types of structures, three antibody antigen complexes, for example. But if there's an interesting prediction, like for example, antibody antigens, everybody knew that alpha fold was not working well on this. And for one target, there was a lack. So what's the reason of this lack? You know, like for this type of things, having extra data would be helpful, but you cannot, of course, generalize and say like, okay, if you do and do this and this, it's gonna uh, address all your antibody problems. It's not this, but at least it's a it's a step towards this direction. It's like providing a recipe for certain types of targets. I think it's more open than the way it is right now. And I would it even is. encourage to open like all the data publicly after the experiment is done because people might also analyze the same models and see things that the assessor it was not um, uh, apparent to assessor as well, you know, in the end, it's only a single team and sometimes well, even one or two people. But it, it is available, except when some PDB files aren't available, but all the models are available. Yes, yes, but five models only. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, sure. As if you want Bjorn saves all 6,000 because it takes much disk space. So like, it's, it's not, yeah. bad. and you don't say the yes, pickle yes, files with data. And nobody does that. Yes, yes. That's why, that's why I I did not, um, I recommend to collect it from a few, few number of groups. Um, and okay, I mean, there's always a way to really uh, pinpoint the very essential files that can be, um, um, that can be shared. But, but in the end, like, this is also the idea of having an open science, right? I mean, if we are willing to do it, I'm sure that we will be able to find a solution. I, 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 I guess the solution would be that you actually have a data storage where people can submit very, very big data sets. I think we need to do before uh, the deadline, and then sort of that can be looked at afterward, unformatted. I mean, that's, I guess, a prediction center could provide, uh, uh, provide that. So beyond 6,000 models could have been dumped somewhere before. And, but they probably should do it for every group. But that, that's that's technical problem. It, it, it's, well, maybe technical problem. I don't know. But that's something that. I mean, same thing with MSAs. Could we have a space that we could everybody could dump whatever MSAs they have used, and we could, and then if needed, the assessor could look at it. Yeah. Or but else. in the end, it's to, it's to my anybody else for anybody else is good for sure. But for an for assessment. It's too much data for too short amount, too short time. So I don't know whether it will be realistic to expect to analyze all the data from all the groups. No, but no, but, but if it's there, at least you can do that without. Some... That's true. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is. Also I mean, you, then you yeah. assessors do what they want, but it's at least they have it, and 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 submit to do what they want also. If they don't want to submit it, they don't have to. That's just free format data. And... I have another question here from Shen, for instance, and it's sort of related to another thing. It's like. Shen asked about mutant outcomes. So if that's something that has to do. And it's somehow, I think it's related to things like uh, that done in GPCR doc, I think that's what you do. And basically you can, maybe you don't want to predict the structure thing. Maybe you want to do predict the ranking. You want to predict how well the ligand binds and uh, how, or rank ligands you got, or is it anti needs rank needs or things like that. Is, uh, I, I think the problem there is that the experimental accuracies are very hard to reproduce. I mean, it's not very clear. Well, on the other hand, is very, at least particularly mutation outcome is very important. So that's uh, uh, yeah. Shen sends a link here. Michael, you want to say something? Just no. uh, want to say that uh, this experiment, from my point of view, changed the whole ball game of um, predicting mutation outcome. Yeah, but 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 if you would do that in two different experiments, the agreement is not that great. It's not at all. So that's uh, yeah. If if, but, if, uh, if sorry, if they do what? The same experiments in two different labs. The the uh, the, the agreement is not that great. So I mean, it, it, it's stability is a measure that is it's quite noisy. Um, okay. One thing to say is that this is exactly what KG does. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
conducts blind prediction experiments on this sort of data set. It's had a number of these sorts of data set. Um, and so this is, I think they do, I, I, yeah, as a co-founder and ex-chair of, of KG, somewhat biasedly, I say they do a great job. But um, okay. it's a very well-evolved system now. And so I would say this is in, and I agree, so this is very interesting data, but it's in their ballpark, not, not CASP sort of thing. Right. And and okay. if you would have people doing law, man, dr uh, hit the uh, uh, drug screening things like the basically where you st structure and ranking this, this is well, I guess also K just done something like that or the, or the docking community. Uh, well, as I said, we're going to try with do rather like three dr three d three r rather used to do um, with Mike Gilson running it this time and so we are trying to get more serious about that aspect of things if that's what you meant mm. okay yeah, I, mean, it, 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 it does, I think that people discuss of course but it's i i, I thought i agree i think it's getting ca cast too wide is not a good idea i think it's good to focus on what we can do so I, I fully agree with you i mean the things are worth doing I mean, the same thing with the rna secondary structure thing what they do okay in kaggle I mean, it's sort of structure related, but it's not structured directly. And Kegel does does an extra job, so why should we bother? It's like yes, you know, it's like I mean, hopefully something that comes out that's useful for other things here. But it's uh, I agree. Okay, I think we are almost out of time. I, Recep had a question or a comment. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad to hear that, you know, uh, ligands uh, will be new category. It was used to be an initiative in the previous CASP. Uh, and the format and everything just released in the last month. Uh, and we were struggling to uh, get predictions for the new uh, format. And Andre helped us a lot. Uh, but I wonder uh, if, you know, it's not really well established uh, and I wonder if you are going to release any information um, with this NIV assessments about that. For example, we are submitting uh, same poses uh, and we are getting different scores for them. Uh, I wonder if you are going to release that earlier information compared to previous one. Not sure I quite follow. I mean, so one part is telling you well enough in advance what the format and the requirements are going to be yes and then what's the second point i think yeah the second point is the assessment of that uh, uh because we were heading to the binding side well but the score is quite different uh based on the identity pli i wonder if you are going to have any other assessment scores besides okay, that so you think you think that was not a from your perspective a, a, a suboptimal a, a score to use is that how you yeah, see it. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing I wanted to say as we finish is that we do still have the CASP Discord. Of course, it's dormant right now because you know nobody cares between CASP sort of things. But we'll send out a reminder, I think, um, and uh, ask people to make these specific suggestions in as detailed way as possible there. Um, so that we know, you know, what what's in people's minds. And and if you would Put it there. We would we would take it seriously. We'd have enough detail to look at it, right? Uh, I mean, for example, for the single prediction categories, it's well established. We know the format, but it's not clear for the ligand and other categories if you are going to okay. make it. Okay, I hear you, but but um, and and I'm noting it. But um, I'm a general point is that it's worth repeating things you've said here, um, and also having more discussion and points made on on the Discord. We, again, we'll send a um okay. send a reminder Great. of where that is and so on um, I, yeah, I, I i will say th one of the things i appreciate with casp is the assessors i guess you know is and, and it's that they are not using a single score i mean you can always agree if it was the best of our score or things like that and it's not always the same because like it, it's we shouldn't optimize for one single thing so look at the rmst for diffusion ligands that people optimize for two of so rmst cutoff and you get horrible models so like it, it's, it's really good that we actually don't know exactly what the assessor is going to do, because that forces us to make good predictions in all categories, and not not over optimize for one number. 
So the, I think it's really good to give the freedom to assessors to use scores. And of course, but of course, if people think scores are bad or if you have other scores to go to, of course, that should be submitted. But I think it's really important to not have a single op score that we should all optimize against. And I think that, uh, that I think is like the most, yeah, I mean, TASP has been like that forever. And some scores have been worse, some scores have been better, but it's always, not, I think the, it, it, in the long run, it works much better to do it that way. Yeah, no, I mean, just to reinforce that, our policy has always been there are sort of some standard scores, but we we don't tell people in advance what all the criteria are going to be, and it's up to the assessor to decide what they want to put most weight on. And I think there's you know there's good things and bad things about that, but but over time, the assessors have been very effective, I think, um, at introducing useful scores, and um, I'd be reluctant to sort of abandon that. Okay. Yeah, I, I I support that fully. So I think it's at least I need to go home and make dinner, and so I think it's time to stop this. And I I, I kind of don't like this idea of running an hour and a half. I think one hour is perfect. So I think it's so uh, uh, I'll unless someone has something very urgent to say, I'll uh, end it. Okay. So um, see you next year. So we have a good set of speakers. <laughs> so bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.